Okay. <laughs> Mad scientist time. Um, I thought I'd show you the largest, most radioactive lens ever seen on YouTube or the internet that I've seen so far. Um, now, a lot of people wrongly think, A, that thorium is a coating on one or more of the elements. It's not. It's actually doped into the glass when it's molten. The question is, why would they put it in there? The more important uh, misunderstanding is that thorium is merely an alpha emitter, which is uh, helium nuclei. That is not true. It certainly emits plenty of alpha radiation, but it also is a beta. You need to uh, uh, familiarize yourself with the thorium isotopes if you're going to say something like that because it's false. Well, it is true that alpha radiation can be blocked by a sheet of paper. Let's see exactly how much stuff this really radioactive lens can uh, go through. Um, this, this is a monster. God, this thing is so heavy. Um, another important thing. Um, why is this glass, glass a, a greenish-brown color? It's the same reason uh, the old type of glass is used, on, and it's very collectible now. The old type of ball uh, jars that were kept out in the sun turn a deep purple. Now they're highly collectible antiques. What happens is it actually changes the nature of the glass to uh, alter a certain uh, permittivity of light frequencies that causes the light to look a yellowish brown color. Here you can actually see it. I don't want to get it too close to my computer. And I don't want to hold the lens too close to my face. <laughs> you see that yellowish brown color there? Yeah, pretty sure you can. Nothing like when you actually get your head near this lens, it's like sticking your head down a gun that's firing. Um, so, let's uh, take a, a look at this lens with the, the old trusty Geiger counter here. Ooh, nice and hot. Peg the Geiger counter. <laughs> uh, makes the Geiger counter scream like a pack of schoolgirls at uh, the Charlin Charles Manson ranch, right? Uh, oh, I didn't say that. I'll edit out that later. Oh, so you think this is just an alpha emitter, huh? Do you think which alpha radiation can be stopped by a piece of paper? So let's try the piece of paper theory here. Must not be just an alpha emitter. Hmm. Let's see. What's a little bit thicker than that? Let's place it underneath this table here, which is about one inch thick of wood. Must not be an alpha emitter only. Let's try something a little bit thicker. How about my hand? Not that I want to hover it over this thing for too long. Hmm, what about two thick pieces of copper plating? Let's see. Is it an alpha emitter? Copper, you know? What about the copper plating and my hand? Must not be just an alpha emitter. All those people said, oh, yeah, sure. Now people say, well, why are you standing over top of it? Get this lens away from my face. Ah. Anyway, oh, that's a heavy beast, isn't it? Look, Kodak. I, I keep putting it near my face. <laughs> uh, oh, God, it's hard to hold up. It's really heavy. Look at that. Wow. Um, let's turn the old Geiger. Wait a minute. 
Isn't that fun? Yay, science! Yay, science! Oh my god, that lens is heavy. Ooh, my goodness. Um, now the question becomes, to all those uh, like people on uh, photo forums, about 60% of which are cockroaches. Yeah, I said cockroaches. They think that magical coatings like anti-reflective and nanocrystal encoding, those are magical. Yay! No, there's something a lot more magical. And next week, next week, I'm going to introduce you to some lenses that are ha 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 magical to adapt to like your Fuji film. However, I wouldn't want to leave it there. Like you would not want to come home and leave that lens mounted to your camera overnight because I'm not too. Uh, I'm uh, not too uh, satisfied that the long-term beta emission to the inside of your camera <laughs> of that lens shooting, literally, pow, 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 shooting inside through the electronics of your camera does any long-term benefits to the camera. <laughs> Seriously, catch my drift. Yeah, so next week, we're going to go over some really, and when I show you the Flickr page for this one lens, there'll be a couple lenses, one of them is really screaming radioactive. Um, the images are magical! Magic radioactive lenses. See, you, all these people out there that, we got advances in technology and they make lenses so much better now and they got super nano crystal encoding and no. What that does is help between inner element bounce of light. Okay? That's a benefit. Especially if you want to construct a lens that has 10, 15, 20 elements in it. That's really big. As so far as prime lenses fundamentally getting better, no, in actually many ways they've de evolved. Except for anything below 28 millimeters. Okay? That's a different arena. 28 millimeters to 400, 500 millimeters. Things have really not improved any in the past 25 years. Fact. That is the reason why hardcore pros, hard, I mean, not people that are like, I'm, I got 10 million subscribers to my Twitter feed and my Instagram. No, not those sort of professional photographers. I mean, like, hardcore. These people that have some serious money, and then you go, why is that rich, famous photographer using that 50-year-old um, brownish yellow looking lens because he knows something that you don't know. Yeah, that old Leica lens is radioactive! Yeah! Radioactive. Because guess what? Hot radioactive lenses handle light differently because People are clueless, generally, when it comes to what the hell light is and what the hell glass is. You don't even have to know any of this stuff. If you're like a hardcore pro, hardcore, I mean, not like a pro pro. Like, he's famous, you know, he's, he's got lots of followers on his Facebook. No, I mean the hardcore dudes. The guy out there is like smoking a cigarette in one hand and he's got like a 50-year-old Leica lens on his camera in his other hand. The guy that knows... It's like, why are you using that old 50-year-old Leica lens or Zeiss, you know? Because I'll tell you, well, my photography skills combined with the way this lens renders the light, it's the shit. Of course, he won't say that. That would be me saying it. Radioactive lenses are special. Not all of them are special. I mean, a bad lens design is a bad lens design. My point is, is if you have a good, really awesome lens design, and one of them is a... Uh, a Pentax lens that I'll mention next week. You can probably guess which one it is. And it is screaming radioactive. But the images from it on its Flickr page, you can just look at thousands of people and it's like, oh my god, that's amazing. See, we can't stick this stuff in lenses anymore because the Europeans and Americans are a bunch of douchebags. We can't stick radioactive stuff in them anymore. And like dangerous. Everything's going to kill you, you know? We can't stick stuff like that in lenses anymore. Like smoking hot radioactive lenses. It's like I could see like a lens designer coming to a Nikon or Sony or uh, <laughs> Sony doesn't make lenses, excuse me, to Nikon 
and Canon or Fuji is like, you know, I got this great idea for an awesome lens. I've already built a prototype, and it's awesome. The only problem is, is I think we should build it, but it's uh, the only problem with it is, 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 is that uh, it's extra hot on the. Uh, <laughs> you see my point? Can't do that stuff anymore. And there is sometimes no replacement for anything. We used to have these uh, brushes that had radium in them, and they were really good for like cleaning things because the uh, radium would uh, the dust would get attracted to the radium in the brush. And ow, God, that lens is heavy and dangerous. There's no replacement for that. There is no replacement. And uh, you know we're in a in a in a in a puss society, Europeans and Americans, just a big big pile of pusses. And uh, you know it's it's a lens. You're not gonna lick it or eat it, right? Right. However, if you accidentally left that lens mounted on your camera, it would go. <laughs> the radiation. You saw what it would penetrate. The radiation from that lens, if you left it on your camera, especially in modern digital. We're not talking about film here, which the worst that's going to happen is it'll fog your film. With the digital camera and all those electronics in there, th th that lens would go nom 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 nom. <laughs> Destroy the inside of your camera. So that creates what we call logistics issues with design and development. So we can't use stuff like that anymore on digital cameras. Um, you can use it, but you wouldn't want to leave it mounted on your camera overnight, which is exactly what someone would do. It'd be like leaving your baby out in the hot car with the windows rolled up. Bad idea. Um, but what the hell do you think they stick that in the glass for? It's not a coating, it's in the glass. What the hell do you think it's there for? You know? We're going to we're gonna design a new lens. Yeah, you got any great ideas for this new lens? You're like, who's the person that first thought of stick, uh, throwing radioactive thorium in the glass? Oh, we got this great new lens design. We thought just for shits and giggles, we'd throw some heavily radioactive crap in there. Wham! I mean, do you think that's what happened? What do you think it's in there for? It's to help the light as it passes through. Helps it. And man, it makes magical images. No lens makes magical images. You're the one that has to make the magical image. It takes images that are extra magical because of the radioactive thorium in there, which goes whoosh, wrangles the light. Does this help your photography skills? No, but it's something nobody else has made a video on. And I'm making it! So don't ask me why I made this video. Some things are neat for the sake of being neat. It's like, now I know something I didn't know before. All lens design is a trade-off. Now we can't use this crap anymore. But this stuff is divinely unique in making lenses. It has not like been surpassed. This radioactive stuff in lenses has not been surpassed. We have only found inferior non-radioactive substitutes. Do you feel me, girlfriend? Do you hear what I'm saying? Inferior substitutes. Yes, that's the case. Bye.